All right, guys, there's something big that we need to talk about. First of all, we're going to talk about the United States. It's a survey that went out, and the results would be surprising because it shows that um, Gen Z and millennials uh, actually are more likely to own Bitcoin than stocks. Now, this signifies a huge shift in financial priorities. Yes, it also signals that uh, Gen Y and millennials are more willing to day gen into certain investments. A lot of stocks represent more of a long-term investment, whereas, you know, meme coins definitely, and more crypto as a whole, represent like faster profits. And I think that's what a lot of the industry uh, revolves around. Obviously, cryptos have a higher ROI, and if you're younger, you're willing to risk more um, with your money because you have more time to make it up if you screw up. But if we actually look at the charts of who's more likely to have crypto based on the uh, survey here, if you look at baby boomers, only about 5%, Gen Xers, 10%, Millennials, 22%, and Gen Zers, 20%. Now, Millennials are probably um, more than Gen Zers right now because Millennials are older and we tend to have more money than people that just started working. I bet in a couple of years, this might actually change. But the fact that like crypto is more popular than stocks uh, represents that millennials prefer the market where it's more free um, without so much red tape and where there's not so many barriers to entry. Because with stocks and stuff, there is still a bigger barrier to entry than there is with crypto. And I think many uh, millennials are more like technologically savvy. So they want to kind of like develop or make coins themselves. And it's much easier to make coins than to uh, create a company that's get listed on an exchange. Because, you know, it's not that hard to copy a smart contract. Whereas it is kind of like doing all the registration, forming a company yourself, and then having people buy your shares much, much harder. Now, it does cost money to build a crypto because on any chain, you have to put up like some capital to do liquidity and stuff, but generally it costs a lot less. And obviously the rug pull factor, unfortunately, does attract a lot of bad actors. So this was a fairly big study um, that featured 4,063 4, adult respondents. It's po uh, published by the Polygenius Financial Planning Survey in the United States. The survey revealed that 20% of Gen Zers, ages 18 to 26, and 22% of Millennials, 27 to 42, are much more likely to invest in alternative assets like cryptocurrencies and non-fungible tokens compared to their older counterparts. Now, I fall into that age range. I'm in the older end of that age range, and I don't really have any friends that are truly into this. A couple of them might have investments but not a lot of them. Some of them are interested, but they don't have a huge amount in these investments. So I'm kind of doubting these numbers. Surveys are generally a little bit biased. The people that answer yes are probably more likely to answer anyways. But in a corollary to stocks, I mean, like there's actually a higher percentage of Amer uh, millennials and Gen Zers that actually have these investments. I don't think they count retirement accounts because basically all of us have stocks in our retirement accounts. And very few of us have crypto in our retirement accounts because, I mean, it's not really allowed yet. I think that will change um, soon, uh, more than ever. But I also think like we got to look at the amount of money that average amount of money that people have in stocks versus cryptos. Like I bet like the average crypto investor has maybe like two, three hundred dollars, whereas the average stock investor, if you especially if you count retirement accounts, probably has several thousand dollars. But nonetheless, it is signaling definitely a bit of a shift for younger generations to pour their money into crypto and stocks rather than stocks. And this is important because the stock market in the United States alone is like $100 trillion. And that's why I think crypto eventually is going to get to that $100 trillion mark. Might take a decade or two, and it probably will, but I definitely think we're going to get on that level because some of that money is going to shift in. And despite like all the regulatory stuff, it's never going to be truly as regulated as uh, stocks because you will have DEXs and all that stuff, which doesn't exist in the stock market. The technology itself does make it a lot harder for the regulators to control all of it like they do the stock market. Younger generations store their wealth differently than Gen X and Boomer counterparts, including novel investments like cryptocurrency. This could show a bigger willingness to take risks with their money, but it could also reflect obstacles they can't control like growing housing shortage. That's true as well because uh, the housing shortage, like houses are more expensive. We want a house. The down payments are more. The interest rates are more. And we obviously need to uh, gather more money 
and like a job might not be able to get us the house we want so we take more risks uh, because we need more money to fulfill the things we want. In addition, 9% and 8 of Gen Z and 8% of millennials say they are likely to turn to social media first with a financial question. So that's actually really dangerous. Um, you should not like, you know, your first source of financial information probably should not be YouTube or Twitter. I mean, you can listen to us, but generally we're not certified professionals. And obviously we're going to be biased towards our own investments. Me probably a little less than others because... Um, I'm not really trying to show anything. I mean, I make my investments fairly clear out. And, and you know, like I base like what I say, like on the continents and the market and stuff. Um, but if I was really to get financial advice, I would get it from not social media because social media is kind of like a cesspool of information and a lot of it's like garbage. And even if you listen to us, you should definitely like do a lot of your own research and look at like the like the pros and cons of investing because crypto, especially like in this meme coin craze, it's really, really dangerous. And even without the meme coins, it's still very, very dangerous because crypto, unlike stocks, like the companies that run a crypto aren't really bound to the crypto holders. The companies that have stocks, they're bound to the stockholders because the stockholders own a portion of the company, whereas crypto holders do not own a portion of the company. And uh, they can just move on from one coin to the other because a lot of people, a lot of companies do actually use coins to raise money for their companies without actually giving away a part of a company. And it's kind of like a scheme for younger investors to fall into. They're like, ooh, shiny technological crypto, but they don't realize what they're actually buying. And sometimes it's basically nothing at all. So like, I think the financial literacy is actually lacking in younger people because like um, generally high schools should actually make it... Uh, should actually make it mandatory, but they don't. So very few people actually take like a financial literacy course. But um, they're, like the wave is undeniable because more and more younger people want part of their retirement and other things in financial assets, and there's a demand. And when there's a demand, someone's gonna rise up. And a lot of the millennials also want less red tape and less regulations, which is also part of the reason I think the SEC is basically going to fail in their mission because the demand is there. So the market's not going away and there's a big push for less regulatory oversight or at least just some preliminary regulatory oversight, but for the most part, just leave us alone. And I think like that's eventually what's going to happen because politicians always want to get votes and uh, to get those votes, essentially like you kind of have to do what the voters uh sort of want you to do over like the entire course of a certain issue. And I think crypto will become one of those major issues in the future. It's not quite a major issue now, but I do believe it'll actually um, become a major issue in the future. And also like 47, 43% of Gen Z and 47% of millennials already invest in cryptocurrencies outside their 401k retirement. And a lot of that 401k retirement will go towards cryptos as um you know, the market and the traditional finance market accept cryptos more and more. So that's really good news. And that is really a generational tide changing. And I do think we will get a $100 trillion crypto market, I would say within the next 15 years or so. Um, South Korea pro Bitcoin party has actually won the election. Now, their pro Bitcoin party is the Democratic Party in South America and uh, South Korea. And they've actually said some things. The DP says, we're going to allow ETFs domestic or overseas. More than 6 million South Koreans, over 10% of the population, own Bitcoin or crypto. I'm not really sure that what that's going to do with the regulations because Korea is the area where like the, the biggest pumps actually come from. So I don't really know if they're going to regulate it more tightly, but they're definitely going to um, offer like crypto financial products. And, you know, 6 million people... And South Korea is a fairly rich country. Six million people is definitely a, an adequate amount to boost up crypto to several thousand dollars because we've seen what those Korean run-ups do. And a lot of times like pumps do actually originate and are the strongest in Korea. So like, that's another sign of the world market overall turning to favor crypto. Uh, maybe not really over traditional assets, but just as much as traditional assets. And I do think other countries will follow along. Once a couple of countries do it, a lot of the other countries will follow along because they don't want to uh, be behind in competition because if they're in, behind in competition, um, things get really, really bad for them if they want to grasp onto the new financial opportunity. Obviously, the markets are going to always move to where the more of the money is. 
and where it's the most open. South Korea is not a poor country. It's a fairly rich country. So, you know, like other competing countries, maybe even China, don't really want to see like a competing neighbor be the main hub for a new financial industry. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.